What's up? Novocaine here. I'm going to show you how to make this pretty cool sealed vinyl record with these wrinkles around the corner to give it this sort of shrink wrap look. Uh, you could use this to promote an artist's latest album with a cool 3D visualizer or, you know, you could show off some of your favorite albums in an interior shot. So yeah, let's just get right into it. Unfortunately, I can only show you how this works on Cycles, not Eevee. So if you're on Eevee, just uh, switch over. Uh, so first, go ahead and make a cube and press N on your keyboard to go to the end panel and go to the item. And we're going to copy the real life dimensions of a vinyl record. So just copy these with me. The X is going to be 0 0.314. Uh, the Y is going to be 0 0.005 and the Z is going to be 0 0.314. So this is the real life size of a vinyl record. So let's actually, before we do anything, apply our scale with control A and then go to edit mode and let's select these two faces on each side and right click subdivide and we're going to subdivide these 30 times. This is just going to give us uh, some topology for beveling in a little bit. So after you've done that, just select any of these rightmost faces. This is going to be the side where we make our hole where the vinyl goes in. So just select any of these, go to select, select similar, normal, and this is going to select all of them just so you don't have to waste time uh, shift clicking each and every one of these. So let's inset these a little bit. So just press I and uh, just very slightly inset it, something like that. And then go to your front view. So this is on the right side. Uh, go to wireframe mode and then press E and then X to extrude this like so. And now you should have a hole in your vinyl record sleeve. So now that you have this, let's, uh, let's add a bevel modifier. So select your cube to modifiers and let's add a bevel all you want to do is change the segments to three and uh, that's it you can now do shade auto smooth and before we go on uh, to get rid of any weird shading uh, issues we're going to add loop cuts to every edge like so so all you want to do is press ctrl r on these edges and just slide them over to the very end kind of like i'm doing here on every side and yeah that's it Right, so now we're going to make the plastic shrink wrap that goes around the vinyl record. So the, uh, the idea of this is we're going to select every single face except this one because we don't want the plastic to go in. We want the plastic to go over the hole. So select the vinyl record. Uh, let's go into our front view, uh, face select mode, and just drag and select everything on the front facing area of the vinyl. Go to your back, hold shift, select everything here as well. Go to the top. Same thing, bottom, same thing, left, same thing, all while holding shift. And if you've done this correctly, you should have everything selected but these edges and anything inside the vinyl record. So after you've done that, go ahead and press shift D to duplicate, uh, right click and then press P and then selection. And right now we can name these. So our cube 001 is gonna be the shrink wrap and our cube is gonna be the vinyl record sleeve. So let's hide the sleeve for a second here and focus on the shrink wrap. So we basically want to fill up this uh, this hole right here. So go into your edge select mode with two and select uh, this edge loop with hold by holding alt shift and just clicking on this edge. So you should have a selection uh, like this. Make sure not to select this edge, but the one at the very uh, end of it. And then go into face, grid fill. And this is just going to give us, uh, you know, better topology so it's not one big face here. Now if I re-enable the record sleeve you can see there's some Z fighting going on here on the edges and this is an easy fix. We're just going to make the shrink wrap just a little bit bigger. So select the shrink wrap, go into your scale right here and you're going to drag and select all three dimensions and you're going to input 1.003 and this is just going to make it a little bit bigger uh, to where you know it would act like a plastic wrap around our vinyl record. Uh, if you do go out far enough in uh, the solid material uh, render node, not render node, what is it called? Uh, solid mode shading. It's going to, uh, you know, still look weird, but don't worry because when we go into cycles, it's not going to show up. So speaking about viewport shading, let's go into our material preview and let's texture our vinyl record. So let's switch over to our shading tab. I'm not going to need these and focus on this and let's make a new material. So right off the bat uh, for the roughness, uh, you can do anything between like uh, 0.1 and 0.2. So I'm going to do 0.15. Uh, this is just like how 
um, glossy your actual vinyl record is going to be. You can't see it that well right now, but you will see uh, when we add the texture. And your specular, you just want to turn this down to 0.1. So now let's apply cover art to our sleeve. So if you don't know uh, what cover art you want to use, there is a download link in the description to all the assets I will be using in this tutorial. So just go ahead and download that. And um, yeah, just make an image node, an image texture node and plug the color into the base color. And I'm gonna go over to this folder and in the cover uh, folder, you're gonna see these two covers. We're gonna pick the front. Uh, these are just random fake cover arts that I made uh, with a scan of my, with an x-ray scan of my teeth. So just go ahead and select the front. But as you can see, it's, it's not looking quite right because we need to um, UV unwrap this. So go into the UV editing tab and go to your front view face select mode and select all these faces in the front and then just press uh, UV Q projection and that should select everything nicely so now if we go into our material preview uh, that fits however if we go to where we made our hole you can see that it's not looking quite right you know this would be pretty off-putting if you saw this angle so we're just gonna UV, export, uh, UV unwrap this as well so just like any of these inside faces right here and press shift G which is a shortcut to the select similar and you're going to select perimeter and just do U Q projection uh, let's select everything here with a scale it down and just drag it to a black part of your cover or you know if your own cover if you're using your own cover you're going to have to improvise or do something and for the edges right here we're going to select these as well so hold alt shift and select this same thing Q projection and we're just going to drag this over to the black area so it's not as visible. And these ones at the top as well, I kind of want to fix this one and this one. That looks fine. Q projection, let's rotate this 90 degrees, scale it down, drag it to the black area. Same thing for the bottom. Uh, navigating around your viewport is kind of janky for this because the model is so vertical. But, uh, you know. It's not, it's not awful, you, you can't do it. So that's our front cover done, but usually vinyl records, they do have something like a track list or additional art on the back, which we're gonna add right now. If you're doing an animation where you can only see the front of the cover, like I did in the start of the video, you don't need to do this. You can just skip along to uh, this time right here and we'll continue on with the shrink wrap texturing. But if you wanna do that, it's actually not that hard. So we're gonna do that right now. So go ahead and select your vinyl, go to the material tab right here, and we're going to call this front cover, our existing material right now. And you're going to click on this plus button, select the front cover, and click this button to make it unique. And we're going to call this the back cover. So let's go into our back, back view here, select all these faces, and press assign. And now we're going to use our back cover like that, just go into the base color and select this other image that I supplied. And same thing, press U, Q projection. You wanna switch over to our back cover here. And it should, yeah, but it's flipped over. So all you have to do is just select all these faces and then press S to scale and then X minus one. And I will flip it around on the X axis. And I've also left this little space here on this texture that you can add on the side here. So let's do that as well. So just select any of these faces, same thing, shift G and select normal. And you wanna assign this to the back cover as well. And then do Q projection, uh, press A to select all and just drag it over to there. And you should have uh, a title, except it's flipped again. So let's do SX minus one, just like we did with the back cover and adjust this a little bit and uh, maybe scale it up a little bit, make the title a little smaller. And yeah, that looks fine. So that's our record sleeve done. So let's go back into our shading tab and unhide the shrink wrap and hide the record sleeve. So select the shrink wrap and we're gonna make a new material called the shrink wrap. And right off the bat, you're gonna delete the principled BSDF because we're gonna be faking plastic with uh, two nodes for the most part. So add a glass BSDF and a translucent BSDF. And then add them both into a mixed shader node. So glass BSDF at the bottom, translucent in the top, and add the shader to the surface. 
Uh, for the factor, um, I think I found the sweet spot for me, which is like 0.7. I'm gonna go into cycles here real quick. Um, disable the scene world. Uh, so basically, the further you go uh, to the glass BSDF, which is one, the more you know glassy it's gonna be. But the reason I added this translucent BSDF is, you know, you want the plastic to not be like, you know, glass because it's not. So I think 0.7 is decent enough for the, you know, material we're doing. But you can go lower for that if you don't want it to be that glossy. Uh, so just play around with this value. But uh, I, I'll, I'll keep it at 0.7. So this looks all right, but I want to add those wrinkles to sort of sell that shrink wrapped look. So you're going to add another uh, image texture node and you're going to open the folder that you downloaded and there's going to be a wrinkles folder in there as well. So here I have three uh, roughness maps for you to use. I just made these by uh, photo bashing some assets I found on the internet. Uh, you can make these as well uh, if you know what you're doing, but if you don't, uh, I have three starter assets here for you. Uh, so I'm going to go with uh, the first one here. And you're going to plug the color into your roughness of your glass BSDF. But as you can see, nothing really happened because we need to unwrap this as well, uh, kind of like we did with the cover. So go into UV editing uh, front. Make sure you have your shrink wrap selected. Select all of these and do Q projection. And it's not showing here, but, you know, everything is now properly unwrapped. So let's go back into shading. So you can kind of see it, but you also can't kind of see it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a area light like that. Rotate it on the X axis, 90 degrees. Let's move it in front of it. Let's move it up a little bit and rotate it down. So it's kind of like at an angle, something like that. That should be good enough. And we're going to change the spread of our light to zero so that we get the most um, sort of direct light we can get. And now you can see that the wrinkles are way too intense. So the way we fix this is just add a color ramp node in between the texture and the glass BSDF. And you just want to drag this black slider down until you get the result that you want from this. So you could encounter something like this where, uh, depend, depending on how you have your light set up, if you have more lights or maybe a different or an intensive HDRI, uh, you could have, you know, your wrinkles look something like this. So the way I found to fix this is to just make the roughness map more intense with a hue saturation value node and just set the value to 10. And that's gonna, you know, based on my experiments, stop making it look like this. So this looks all right, but we can make it look even better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a studio HDRI. And the reason for this is it has a lot of these cool lights uh, that are gonna reflect off the plastic and it's also black and white, so it's not gonna mess with the colors of your um, cover art, if you have a colored cover art, even though there's just a minute detail. So go into your world tab, color, environment texture, and open up, um, you know, any, any HDRI that you like. I personally like Studio HDRIs. I'm gonna link this one in the description. So select that, and now I gotta switch over to Scene World. And now you can see uh, we have some cool light reflections from this lamp right here and uh, this lamp right here. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. And I'm actually gonna disable, um, I'm gonna enable transparency under uh, render film transparent. So now we have no background. So if you wanna use an actual vinyl record, uh, you could probably follow a tutorial online, but there is a great one that I found on Sketchfab that's completely free. Uh, I just imported it, positioned it, and uh, I guess it makes sense. All you would have to do is just replace the um, cover here, just in any basic image editor. I think this is for an ACDC song, so you would just drag this into Photoshop or GIMP or whatever, and just replace the cover in that image with whatever you're using. It's actually a little bit too big, let me scale that down. Another cool little detail you can do is you can add these little stickers on the outside packaging. And I'm gonna just quickly show you how to do that right now. So let's go into my layout right here. And you wanna make sure that your import images as planes add-on is enabled. This is inside of Blender already. You don't have to download anything, just enable it in here. And just add an image, images as planes. 
and I also made some stickers uh, you can use if, if you want to. You can make your own. I'm going to pick, let's say, this one. Let me rotate it, scale it down, uh, position it roughly, something like that. And you're just going to add a shrink wrap modifier to this and select the target to be your vinyl record sleeve and make sure the offset, I think it was something very small, like 0.0005, I think. So you wanna make sure that it's as close to the vinyl as possible so it doesn't get any shadow. Maybe 0 0.00025. Yeah, that looks good enough, why not? And now you can uh, position this anywhere you want. Let me do the bottom right corner here, scale it down a little bit some more. And in the shading tab, uh, you can make the sticker more rough so it looks more like a sticker. If you want to animate this for a product animation, all you have to do is just uh, make it empty, scale it down, select everything. So that's going to be your vinyl record sleeve, shrink wrap, a sticker, and the vinyl record as well if you're using it. Then shift click on the empty, control P, object, and you can now call this your vinyl record, I guess. And now you can uh, just rotate this around by just rotating the empty. You can animate it, go crazy. Rotating on the z-axis uh, works pretty well for product animation. And one last thing, this is pretty important. Um, I would advise you to not denoise this render because the way these wrinkles work, they're, they're not going to look good. Uh, so my tip would be to just use a pretty low noise threshold, anything between 0.02 to 0.05. You know, play around with the settings uh, till you get it right. Personally, I, yeah, I just use like 0.2. 0 0.2, 0 0.03, 0 0.04. And that's how you make this uh, vinyl record and packaging, vinyl record and shrink. I, I, I didn't know what to call this tutorial, but if you make something with this, uh, you, you should send it to me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can also fire away in the comments or DM me if something's not working. And I also want to thank you guys for the crazy support on my first ever video, which was my last video. I got like 2,000 something views, crazy amount of likes, 150 subscribers, that's insane. Uh, I did not expect my first video to do anywhere near that. And yeah, stick around, uh, more tutorials on the way, got some cool ideas. And yeah, that's it, peace out.